Hello everybody, in this video, we're going to look at legal and ethical concerns, which is topic 5.5 of the APCSP exam. And in addition, we'll have a bunch of practice problems. All right, let's get going. So whenever artists create, it could be animating something, it could be writing music, or it could even be writing code or writing software. That work is protected by copyright, which is protection for these works under United States law. Copyright exists right away whether or not you file for copyright. And this is a common misconception. Although if you want to sue somebody for breaking your copyright, you do have to register. But for the APCSP exam, whenever you see the words unauthorized use, without permission, copying, distribution, the alarm bell should go off in your head. The issue you want to be thinking about is copyright. And copyright is going to tell you that none of these things are allowed. So copyright by default is super restrictive. But what if I want it to be a little bit less restrictive? Maybe I want to let people use my videos as long as they're not making money. This is where Creative Commons comes in. So whereas copyright is all rights reserved, Creative Commons can be thought of as some rights reserved. And which rights are those? Well, Wikipedia lists them here. Attribution just means you have to credit somebody. Non-commercial means you can't make money. These are probably the most common ones. You can combine these grants in different ways. And here's a graph from Wikipedia that shows how you can combine them and how popular those combinations are. And because of Creative Commons, it's much easier to share on the internet than if I just had the one really restrictive copyright law. APCSP also covers a couple of other ways to share on the internet. And one of those is open source. This is Tux the Linux Penguin, maybe the icon most commonly associated with open source. Open source means that code, the source code, is available to all. And this means that it can be changed by the community. Usually, software that's open source is cheaper than commercial software. And you're also not at the whims of the company, meaning that if the company decides they're not going to sell the product anymore, you still have the code so you could compile the code and run the code. You might see a question on the exam that asks about advantages of open source software, and so here they are. There is a trick question that can show up about open source, and that is this. Even though the code is free, companies can still make money. And how does that happen? Well, they can fix or add to the software. They can teach people how to use it or the companies can get paid to compile the software or get it to run on your machine. The code is free, but getting it to run on your machine is not necessarily free. And here are some well-known companies that make their money in this way. You might be surprised to see Python here, but the creator of Python makes boatloads of money working on Python for companies like Microsoft and Google. The third method that AP Board wants us to know about is called open access. Open access is free and open access to academic information. So here is an example. This is Google Scholar. I'm going to search for Coca-Cola. It's going to come up with all these academic articles about Coca-Cola in scientific journals. So the bottom line here is because of Creative Commons, open source, and open access, we have more data and software available to us than ever before through the wonders of the internet. All right, here are the practice questions. One of these must be true. A, open source means that software developers will do coding work for free and whenever you request. This is not true. Open source means that the source code is open for you to see, but that's all. If you can compile that software, then it's free, but the software developers are not there at your back end call. B, copyright is designed to help creators share their work with others. No, actually it's designed to protect their work from others who might profit off their work. So B is not correct. C, open access means that if you pay a small fee, you can have access to a huge collection of scientific journals. This is definitely not true. Open access means that you have open access, open and free access to scientific research. So D is true. Creative Commons licenses can help creators have control over how they want to share their work. As you saw from before, you can share it requiring attribution only. You can share it saying you can share it, but no mixing. Whole lot of different ways. Creative Commons gives you fine grain control over how you share. Question two, a singer releases a song under an attribution and non-commercial Creative Commons license. One of these is most likely to be true. A, a person will be able to copy the song and sell it to friends over the internet. No, this is not going to be true. Remember, non-commercial. B, a person will not be able to download the song over the internet anymore. This is also not true. The idea behind the Creative Commons license is that we're going to allow people to download it and use it for certain things, but not everything. So this is not true. C. A teacher could use this song for a video that will be distributed for educational purposes. And again, we're going back to non-commercial. Educational purposes count as non-commercial, and that's okay under this license, so C is true. D, a video game company using this and putting it in a video game which they use for commercial reasons is not going to be allowed, again, because it violates the non-commercial part of this license. 
Question 3. Which of these would be considered to be unethical? 1. A teacher makes 20 copies of a single user software for the teacher's class. So it doesn't matter if the teacher is doing the right thing or the teacher is a good person. The license says single user, so you can't copy it for 20 people. So 1 is unethical, which is what we are looking for. 2. A teacher uses a song under a Creative Commons attribution license in a video and attributes the video to the song creator. So this is exactly what the license allows us to do. And so this is not unethical and it is not what we are looking for. There is a trick here that I'm going to mention really quick. An attribution license still allows for commercial use. So just keep that in mind. And three, a software developer uses a song under a creative license, attribution, and non-commercial license in a computer game that will be sold online. So the non-commercial part of this is going to ban the selling online. And so this one is unethical. And again, it is what we are looking for. So one and three are unethical. And the answer then is C. Four. Which of these are likely to be okay with respect to legal and ethical issues? 1. Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross, and Mother Teresa download a song off a peer-to-peer -peer network like BitTorrent. So the idea here is that no matter how good Mr. Rogers is, Mr. Rogers cannot do something that's illegal. So A is not okay with respect to legal and ethical issues. 2. Ted Bundy, notorious mass murderer, pays for Netflix and watches a movie on it. As awful as Ted Bundy is, this is legal. So this action by itself is okay with respect to legal and ethical issues. Three, Idi Amin and Pol Pot download the source code for an open sourced software project. Again, Idi Amin and Pol Pot are some of the worst people in the history of the world. But with that said, the whole idea behind open source software is that one can download the software, the code anyway, anytime that one likes. So this is okay. So two and three are okay with respect to legal and ethical issues. So what we have is the answer. Question five, two of the following are true. Select two. A, as indicated by the name, one does not make money from open source software either directly or indirectly. This is not true. This is one of the big misconceptions about open source software. You can make money from open source software, supporting it, teaching it, that kind of thing, just not by selling the code. So A is not true. B, software developers can add to and edit code for open source software projects. This is true. C. Open source software means that random people on the internet are not able to see the code for the software. It's actually the opposite, exactly the opposite. Open source software means that any random person on the internet can see the code for the software. So C is not true. D, open source software is usually less expensive than commercial software. This is true. At least directly, you may pay a price for support or knowledge or something like that, but the software itself is usually less expensive. So the answers we are looking for here are B and D. Question six, one of these is true. One, I'm trying to decide between four open source games to play. Assuming I can compile them, I can try them all out first before deciding which one to play. This one is definitely true. That's the whole idea behind open source. You can see the source code, and then if you can compile it, you can compile it and make it run. Two, open source software means that there are potentially more eyes on a code than commercial software. This one is also true. Open source software, again, means that the code is open to all to see. So anybody can look at it, and potentially you have more eyes on that software. Three, a scientist might choose to put a scientific paper in an open access journal so that the scientific results can be freely seen by all. This one is definitely true. That's the whole reason we have open access journals. So the answer here is one, two, and three. These are all true, and we're looking at D. Question seven, which of these is true? One, open source software means more access to the code, so potentially a bad entity could put malicious code into the software without anybody noticing. This is true. Open source software allows access to the code and often, very often, are community-based projects, meaning that people from the community are adding and changing the code, which carries with it some risk. Two, software licensed under open source allows you to update and add features to the software. So this is what we just talked about, and this is true. Three, open source software means the creator of the software will update and fix bugs in the software for you free of charge. This is not true. They will fix bugs and update the stuff whenever they darn feel like it. Now, if you pay them, they might do it in a more timely manner. But again, they are not obligated to do so. So one and two are true. So the answer we're looking for is B. Question eight, which of these is true? One. Creative Commons provides for lossless heuristics of creative material. So that's clearly just a bunch of nonsense mumbo jumbo that is related to APCSP, but not this question. So that one is wrong. Two, 
a musician who wants to allow others to download and remix her music, while giving credit to her, should issue her work under a Creative Commons license rather than rely on a traditional copyright. So that one is true. Again, Creative Commons gives us flexibility in how we manage the rights to our materials. So again, this one is true. Three, multiple Harvard professors and faculty copying papers from other academics is legally and ethically okay because those people from Harvard and they know better than the rest of us proletariat. No matter how much Harvard will try to tell you that this is true, this is not true. So the answer is two only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.